Now we want to graph, uh, well, like solve and graph inequalities. And the first one we want to deal with is linear inequalities. And you've done dealt with linear inequalities in the junior school. And remember, inequality is one that we add or we sorry we have a greater than or less than sign there rather than equals to. Although this one's greater than or equal to, we've got the equal to sign there. So we want to solve them basically like an inequality, like an equation. But the only difference with an inequality is that if we multiply or divide by negative, we change our inequality sign. So with this one, we're solving like normal. We add two, we divide by three, and that gives us x greater than or equal to two. So we didn't have to change our sign. And then when we're graphing, it's, it's not very clear on this one, but we fill in two because it's equal to, so it's equal to the value of two, and then it's greater than. So that's going to go off in the positive direction. So these ones, as I said, these ones you've done in the junior school, so it shouldn't be a surprise. Um, this time, I'm going to add x on both sides, so it gives us the 3x there. Add 8 on both sides gives us 12. So 3x is less than 12, which gives us less, x is less than 4 when we divide by 3. So notice here in this time, we've got an open circle around there. So we're starting at 4 and going less than, but it's got to be an open circle. So make sure you, you get that open circle because it's not equal to. It's filled in if it's equal to. This time, 4x plus 3 is less than 12 plus x, so we subtract x on both sides. We subtract 3 on both sides, we get x less than or equal to 3. So that's actually going, <laughs> it's not the right one there, because that's x is greater than 2. So we want x is less than 3, we should have it going in that direction. So we move off in that direction. So we fill it in that way. It's having trouble getting it to go straight tonight. So, but it's going from three and less than. Make sure it's a filled in circle as well. And x, this next one, six x minus five, greater than nine minus x. So seven x greater than 14 and x then greater than or equal to two. So again, we're just adding the x, subtracting the five, dividing by the seven. And we didn't have to change our sign because we didn't add or subtract. And this time x is greater than two. Well, it's not x is greater than two. So again, x is greater than or equal to two would be going off in that direction. So there's linear inequalities. This been, we've done those before in the junior school. What you haven't done though is inequalities with quadratics. Now, again, this is something that's new that we've got to be careful about. It's going to take into account the work we've done with our quadratic equation. So really what we're going to do is solve a quadratic equation and then look at what values do we want as a as opposed to equal to zero, is it greater than or less than zero? So if we have a look here, we've graphed x minus three x plus two. So that's where it goes through the x-axis. So when y is equal to zero, goes through at minus two and positive three. Now, we want to look at what the values of y are. We know at minus two and three, we get them that are we get them there that are equal. So when x y is equal to zero x is equal to minus 2 and 3. Now when x is between minus 2 and 3, so minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and any numbers in between, we get y being, the y values being less than 0. So we get negative y values. So where, where y is great, less than 0, we'd have uh, x between minus 2 and 3. So any values there, y is going to be less than zero. So that leaves the other areas, the other values of x, where we get x, but we're getting y being equal, greater than zero. So we'd say then x is going to be either less than minus two, or x is greater than three. And that's going to give us positive values of y, because we put in any values that are x, that are less than minus two or greater than three, we sum them in, and we're going to get where we're going to get positive y values. So that's how we start to solve a quadratic inequality. So if we look at one like this, x minus 1, x plus 3 is less than 0. Again, draw your graph up, and this is where it makes it, it makes it easy to solve this, because we draw a graph up and read off our graph. So we've got x minus 1 and x plus 3, so it goes through 1 and minus 3. I mean, where's our graph going to be less than 0? Our y values less than 0. So we can see it's between the two values. So where it's x is greater than minus 3, and less than one. So all I've done is just read it off the graph between those two values, and then I'm able to put down that that domain 
for the X values there. So the, the set of X values that work there. And that's what we need to do for all the quadratic inequalities. Draw a graph and see whether we want them to be less than or greater than zero and then put down the corresponding X values. So next one, X squared minus six X plus five, greater than or equal to zero. So we factorize it, X minus one, X minus five is the factorization of that. So we graph it up. So we got minus one, so we got when it goes through one and five from our equation there and we're looking at where the value y values are greater than zero so greater than zero there which means it's going to be less x is going to be less than or equal to one or greater than or equal to five notice it's equal to so that's why we've included the equal to signs there but basically we're that side of one and that side of five and that gives us positive values there. So we're just looking at the sign. If that was less than or equal to, we'd have the values in between. So X would be greater than one, but less than five. So we're just looking at what values we want from our inequality. So again, we're looking at this one here. We factorize X squared minus, uh, plus four X minus 12. So we're gonna get minus, uh, we're gonna get X plus six, X minus two. And that gives us minus six and two that it goes through and it's concave up. So it be, being able to draw our parabola really quickly makes life easy. And then where is it greater than zero? So we're going all the values that are less than minus six or all the values that are greater than two. And we x squared minus 12x plus 20, we draw it up, we can see that it goes through two and 10. So once we do that, where are the values less than or equal to zero? Well, in between, so all these values here, so between two and 10, are the values we want to take. So X has got to be greater than or equal to two or less than or equal to 10. Any values we throw in there will make that less than, less than or equal to zero. X squared minus 10X plus 21. So we factorize, we get X minus three, X minus seven, which gives us values of three and seven that it goes through the axis. Where is it greater than or less than or equal to zero? When your values are less than three or when your values are greater than seven. So that's where we get that inequality from. And four, so again, we factorize it. We have x squared minus x minus 30, which is gonna go through x is great, equal to uh, x plus six, sorry, x minus six, x plus five, less than zero. So that's where we get the six and the minus five, where it goes through. It's less than zero, so we're looking at the values there, which means that it's gonna be between five, minus five and six. So that's where we get inequality that's where we start to graph uh, solve quadratic inequalities always draw a graph it makes life easier you can draw quick graphs it doesn't have they don't have to be great graphs but it just has to be a quick graph because you want to see where it goes to the x-axis and really that's the most important values because then you can determine your y where your y values are going to be greater than zero or less than zero